Good morning. Earlier this week, I was telling you about a Stephen Weistruck. He's a, so a sailor and was planning on sailing solo from California out to Hawaii. And he went back and started studying some of his favorite books of other sailors who had made great solo trips. And of course, one of them was Tinkerbell, written by Robert Manry. I've been telling you about Robert Manry and his life and how he managed to sail this 13 and a half foot sailboat across the Atlantic. I still find that hard to believe. Across the Atlantic, took him 78 days to cover 3,200 miles. Well, when Stephen decided to kind of do what he called the Robert Manry Project, to get all kinds of past uh, movies that he had made, uh, pictures have been taken, learning, and then he made it into a film called In the, In the Wake of a Dream. And it won all kinds of awards. But as a part of that project, he also put out word and said, if you ever had a chance to meet Robert Manry, or if you knew of him, and he affected your life in some way, write and tell us about it. Well, they received a wonderful letter from a man named Miles Tredenick. Miles lived in England, and he was now 62 years old. But back on August the 17th, 1965, he was 10. And he was living in Falmouth, England. And all the news that had started coming out that summer, talking about Robert Manry sailing in this 13 and a half foot sailboat for Falmouth, England, had captured everyone's attention. When there'd be a sighting by the ship, or I already told you about the submarine earlier this week. I mean, word would go out and everyone would just talk about Robert Manry. And then there wouldn't be any sightings and you wouldn't hear anything for days or several weeks. And then they would always wonder, had the sea swallowed him up? And then there'd be another sighting and now everybody would be talking again. And then it would grow quiet. And then another sighting. And so it had gone throughout the summer until finally on August the 17th, that's when they were told he was going to arrive. He was at home watching a black and white TV with his parents. Everyone was glued to the TV, but he was looking out the window and he could see the ocean. And he said, Mom, why don't we go and let's go be there in person? So they went out and they jumped in the car. His mom thought it was a great idea. They headed up to a point and there were so many people, bad idea. There's no way you could ever get close to the edge to see. They decided to go downtown. They turned around, headed back downtown. They managed to find a parking place, but then they got out to start walking again. There was more than 50,000 people who had turned out. There was no way they were gonna get close. When they ran into a man who was a constable, a friend of his mother's from years ago, they went to school, and he invited her into a building and they went upstairs onto a, a second floor. It looked right out over the harbor and now they had a seat indoors ringside with a perfect view. It was so exciting and they saw Robert Manry arrive. People were waving their flags. There was a band playing Stars and Stripes Forever. Then the band went into the Star Spangled Banner Horns were blowing on big cruise ships. He said it was like the Beatles had come to town. He thought it was so exciting. But the next day he said to his mom, I want to get his autograph. I want to meet him. Well, what's the chance you're going to get to meet Robert Manry? He was staying at the, um, the Green Bank Hotel. And so he got his book with his mom. They went down to the Green Bank Hotel the lobby was packed and there's all kinds of security. There's no way he was getting near him. But he wandered around to the side of the hotel to a little rose garden and who should step out of the side door but Robert Manry. And he went right up to him and just said, I think what you did was so amazing and so great and could I have your autograph? And Robert Manry could not have been kinder. He autographed his book and he told him Never be afraid to pursue your dreams. He was 10 years old. Miles said he never forgot it. Six years later, I told you earlier this week, Robert Manry would have a heart attack and die at 52 years old. 
But 50 years later, Miles would still remember that moment that he met him and what he had said. And Miles said that through his life, he would always look back and remember the encouragement of this hero. Don't be afraid to pursue your dreams. It changed the way that he lived. Understand that what you say, your life, has such an impact on others. And it will outlive you. Years after you are in the kingdom of heaven, others will still remember, and it will affect them. It's the way that you leave a legacy when you decide to show kindness, to show those words of encouragement, to speak them, then your life lives on as you bless the lives of others. Just know God will use you when you decide to go out and love your neighbor, no exception.